everybody. Today we are going to take a look at some bubble best practices and a fundamental concept in bubble of the parent-child elements and how to pass data between them. Uh, those things are, uh, I've accumulated kind of these best practices over the course of working with bubble uh, starting in 2017. So these are things that I picked up that make my life easier as a bubble developer. And you, if, if someone is looking at your app, you want to make it so that they can understand what's going on in your application, in your head. The logic that you use should make some kind of sense. Build. So you'll notice that I've upgraded to the responsive engine and I recommend that everybody do that. Uh, if you haven't, do that now. Make sure that you're working in the new responsive. Width for the UI builder is set to be 1280, which is probably like the average size of a laptop. Uh, and the minimum width of 320 which is the size of a very small smartphone. All right, so these are the, the widths that I tend to work with uh, and the minimum height. I'll leave it big for now, just so you have some room to work with. You're probably gonna shrink this to zero at some point, but until you have some elements on the page, leave this, you know, leave this to, for at a pretty big height, at least, at least 2000 or, you know, at least 2000. Okay, so the fan, you'll notice that it's also a column layout. Now, if you're not familiar with the different layout options here, check out my other bit, video around responsiveness, um, responsiveness and page layout, and to get a deeper explanation of what these things are. But we're going to start off with a column layout here. All right, and I'm going to add a group to the page. All right, and this is going to be, we've got a black background, so I'm just going to remove this style so we can work with uh flat here now first thing first best practice that i'll call out here is name your elements spend the time to name your elements i cannot stress this enough there's two things i'm going to say today that you should follow religiously one is naming your elements this is the first one so what i mean by naming is naming them in a convention that makes sense to you so that you can refer back to this element in your workflows in the conditionals that you're going to set up uh, um, to hide and display elements, especially if you're working in a single page application, which for a lot of you mobile people will be the case. Uh, you, you have to be able to name these things in a way that makes sense to you. I like in, uh, if, if you don't, if you don't name these, uh, it's, it's like having a, a file explorer on your computer and there's a bunch of files and none of them are named. How the hell are you ever going to find anything? So name your elements name your elements name your elements let's say it one more time i know it's annoying name your goddamn elements okay group a uh so the bubble default will be the default will always be group the naming convention that i use and you can this is where you can be flexible you can use a naming convention that makes sense to you the way that i do it is i leave the type of element that it is so i know that i'm working with a group and then i'll call this group hero image related to something pertaining something to the, 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 the information that I'm going to display inside this element. I'm going to put a hero image here. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm just going to go to, I'm going to tab over to layout. I'm going to make this a, I guess we could leave, we can do an align to parent here. I think that makes the most sense. Uh, I'm going to uncheck, make it fixed width so that it stretches across the stream screen and let's make it, let's make it a little bigger. Let's make it. 400 minimum height. Now what I'm going to do is drop an image element into my group. And we'll call this image hero. All right, let's upload an image. I'm house is my development agency. So I'm going to build a mock landing page for Payhouse. Okay. So I'm just going to uncheck again. I'm just going to kind of uncheck that this is a fixed width. So it stretches across the page. So the second pro tip here that I want to give you today is using navigating via the element tree. Now it's going to get pretty confusing. You're going to have a lot of elements on this page at some point, and it's going to get hard to just be able to click on things like I'm doing now. But if you, if you use the element tree here, you're going to be able to access all of the parent elements. And now this is called a parent element to the hero image, right? So the, because the hero image is inside of the group hero image, this is the parent this is the child. Uh, Bubble is going to build out this page structure for you based on the way that you arrange your elements on the page. Okay, so I'm going to go to the group hero image and I'm just going to increase the minimum height here a little bit to like maybe 600 because this is a big image that I'm working with here. 
Okay, let's leave it at that. That's okay. All right, then I'm just going to add some text to the page. All right, and because we're using the align to parent, we have a, a, the nine options of where to put this element. I'm going to put it on the bottom right. And we'll call this text, Welcome to Bay House. Okay. Welcome to Bay House. Now I'm going to put a little bit of a margin here. Uh, so you'll notice that if I move this around, again, this is kind of just a rehash of a line to parent. I can move it, at, it'll fix it kind of like a floating uh, element in any at any point that you place it here. Um, um, and you're not limited to these nine points. You can always put margins in, on the element to push it off the, like I don't want it to be all the way on the left like that. So I'll put a 20 pixel margin to move it off the, move it off the edge. All right. It's really, again, we're not doing a design course here. Again, I'm just pointing out a few best practices that I work with. And um, we're going to get to the parent child elements and how they relate to each other in a second. Now, the other thing I, I, I want to point out is save points. Um, this is a best practice uh, by any by any standard creating save points. Think of it like in, you know, back in the day in the 90s when you had to save your work constantly or else you would completely lose. Think before Google Sheets where everything was saved automatically as you work. Right. You had to save your work or otherwise you're going to lose it. Now, Bubble is technically making save points for you at all times. And you can always refer back to a specific point down to the second uh, of, of what you did. But you don't know when you got your, your, your page to look exactly the way that you want it to. Uh, you don't know when you got that workflow working just right uh, in, the way, in the logic that you've set up. Uh, you don't know the you don't have a mental record of the exact second that you got that thing right. So you may go on and change other things and break that thing that you were working on for God knows how many hours. So a way to avoid that is to create save points and you can they can be as very simple, but they have to make sense to you. Right. So this could just be like hero image image created. Save. All right. So anytime I complete something, I create a save point. That's a lot of save points. Right, but now I can go back in the history and my hero image is created there. Now, depending on what plan you're on, it's going to depend how far you can go back with this. I think on a, on a personal plan, you can go back seven days, I think. Um, but this is extremely valuable, especially in the short term when you're working on a specific functionality or a specific look and feel for your, for your page and you get it just the way you want it. You want to say, you want to create a, a little, a stop point for that and just say, all right, I did this. This is good. If I mess anything up in the future, I can always refer back to that specific point and just revert to that time. OK, so you cannot have enough save points. The more save points you have, the better. I'm going to create another group. Drop it on the page. All right. And this is going to be group B. We'll leave that default. I want that black background now. And we'll call this group devs. We're going to use this group to display the different developers that you can possibly work with at Payhouse. Okay, so group devs. Again, I'm just going. I'm going to set it to a row here. I think row is the most appropriate, and I'm going to uncheck fixed width, and let's give it a little bit more than than 400 height. Let's do let's do 300. Uh, let's do let's do another 600. I'm going to put a repeating group here. And now my repeating group is going to look up to my user table. All right, so here's my user table. I've got two developers in here. They both have a headshot here. And this is what we're going to display in our repeating group. All right, so if I go back to my repeating group here, the type of content is going to be user. And then the data source is going to be do a search for users. All right, so we want to display all the users in our database. Okay, so we only have two, so I'm just going to make this easy and just put two users here, uh, two rows, because we only have two users to display. And I'm going to put, I'm going to make, change this to a column layout, my repeating group, because I want these elements to stack on top of each other. So let's do a picture. Let's do another image element. Image, and this will be image uh, dev headshot. Okay. Center it. 
And we'll put a little margin on the top. Let's do 20 so it's just not right on the top of the repeating group. Okay. And the image that I want to display here is going to be the dynamic image of current sales users headshot. All right. Now we have this option because we set it to we set the data source of the repeating group to be a user and we're searching for users in the database. Headshot is a column in the user table. So we're saying display what the, the, the information that's in this uh, column here in our repeating group, right? Repeating groups are useful for working with lists. All right, so if we do a quick preview of what we have so far, you can see that my, my, my pictures are showing up here. All right, so the settings are to, to, to make the image the same, to keep it the same size, uh, resize to fit uh, the dimensions by cropping, process with MGIX, resize to fit the dimensions by cropping, and then set the aspect ratio to be fixed. And that should keep this picture as the same size in the repeating group, regardless of the actual size of the file. I'm getting cut off on the top there, but I don't know. I don't care that much. All right, so let's add one more element. Let's add a button. And we're going to add both static and dynamic text to this button here. So we're going to say work with current sales users name, right? And again, this is referring to a column in the database uh, that has the person's first name. Okay, so we can, in, in any element, you can put a combination, you can combine static text and dynamic text uh, if you set the expression up. Now, the idea here is that if they click work with this person, there's going to be another profile section that opens up over here with more information about this, this developer. At a low level with the image dev headshot, this is a child of the repeating group. If we take it to the next step, the repeating group devs is a child of the group devs. The group devs is a child of the page, the index page that we're on here. Okay, so there's this hierarchy that's, again, that's kind of just to go back to the, uh, the, the elementary here. There's a hierarchy that just tells you exactly the parent-child relationships that are set up on your page, right? So you have the group, you have the page. On that page, there is two groups. If I open up group devs, we have a repeating group that's the child of group devs. Open this up, and we've got two more child elements here in the repeating group. Okay, so this relationship is important for a number of reasons. One is that just physically, you can just move things around on the page and they stay together uh, because they're, you know, they're related elements. And two is that you can pass data between these things now. Right, so now what I'm going to do is pass some information to another group that I'm going to set up in this page. All right, so here I'm going to do group, let's call this group profile. And the type of content, now this is important. Now let's add, now let's add two elements to this group, an image. Now this is important. So right now, if there's no data type set to the content of, of this group, is you're going to get the dynamic expression is going to say parent groups thing because there's no data type. It just knows that there, if there is something, uh, there is a piece of data to display, it's going to be a thing. But we don't, we haven't told Bubble what that thing is yet. Contrast that on what we did in the repeating group. We set the type of content to a user, and the where that information comes from is our date, our, our user table. Search for users. Now we're going to do the same type of thing here. We're going to set the type of content to be a user but we're gonna leave the data source blank. Now that we've done that, look, we've got a different option. Now, instead of saying parent groups thing, it says parent groups user, because we know that we're gonna be displaying some user content here. So we're gonna say parent groups users headshot in the same way that we did in the repeating group over here. Okay. Now let's do the image and we'll, we'll name this image dev profile. And let's just do, let's do the same thing we did uh, before. Is on a, we can make it fixed with fixed. Processed with Injix. Resize to fit by cropping. And we're just going to make it fixed. Okay. And below, below here, we'll put some additional information about the user's email. So we'll say parent group users email, right? Giving them some contact information. Okay. 
Now I'm just going to put some space between these groups. You can do that by going uh, very easily. You don't have to add margin to everything. Uh, you can apply gap spacing between elements. And let's you can do you know 20. So there's a little bit of space. Now anything that I put into this group devs is going to have a 20 pixel space between them. Very handy. And we can just center this. Now what we're going to do is dynamically send user data from this repeating group depending on what the user clicks in to this profile group over here on this side. All right, so we're going to hit start edit workflow. We're going to click on the button. We hit start edit workflow. We're going to say data, element actions, display data. Now the element that we want to display in is going to be our group profile, right? So again, if we didn't, if we didn't name these, it wouldn't be so obvious. We get a picture of it. But a lot of times your pictures, your, the groups are going to look very similar. So you may not be able to tell from this little preview here. So the extent to which you name these elements properly is going to make your life a lot easier down the road. Now we're setting the data to display. This is almost like the, this is almost like the data source of the repeating group, right? Same idea. We're going to display current cells user, current cell referring to the cell in which the, the, the person that's that's uh, that's using the application clicks into, right? So dynamically, it's going to send whichever cell that person clicks into to our profile group here, right? Now that's all we need. That's all we should have to do to do this. Let's preview this. Okay, let's do work with John. We've got John in. Now we got John's info over here, and then we got work with Jose. We got Jose's info over here. Okay. So now one thing that I'll call out too is that the page itself is just another group, right? So that you can set content on the, at the page level in the same way that you do in the group level. The page is always going to be the highest level group and the, the groups on the page are going to, or all the elements on the page are its children or grandchildren or great grandchildren, whatever. Um, but you can set the type of content on a page in the same way that you can set it in a single group like we did here. Um, now this becomes important when you're navigating to different pages from one and when you're sending data from one page to another, as opposed to sending it to groups like what we've done today. All right. So we've covered a few bubble best practices, name your elements, create save points, use the element tree. Uh, we also took a look at how the page is laid out in terms of parent child elements, uh, the page being the highest level, uh, parent. And we've also looked at how to pass information dynamically between groups. Okay. So, it's, so try to recreate some version of this page and this functionality on your own. And then when we meet, we can go over if there, if you ran into any issues or you wanted to take this to the next level. Okay. Talk to you soon.